Hello friends, welcome to part two of the God Cures Ministry Easter message. I'm Chaplain Bill Goodrich and the song that we just heard exemplifies my heart in regard to my relationship with God. I want to walk closer to Jesus. That's my song. I trust that's your song too. Well, today we are going to open up the scripture and within the scripture is the message and the words of Jesus that will enable us and help us to walk closer to him. So as we begin, let's bow our hearts before him and pray and welcome his presence in our lives. Lord Jesus, thank you so much that you love us, that you care about every aspect of our lives, that you never leave us, you never forsake us. And Lord Jesus, we pray in your holy name, welcoming you into this time of reviewing your word and considering what you say. Jesus, our hearts are open to you. Please teach us and guide us Help us to know and understand what you are saying and give us the grace to live according to your will and your purposes. For your glory and your name's sake we pray. Amen. Well, I'd like to begin by reviewing a little bit from part one of the Easter message. Uh, we, we talked about when God created man, Adam, the first man, he and Adam had a companionship and a fellowship that was very beautiful. Adam knew that he was loved. He knew that he was cared for and valued. Uh, God had uh, given Adam peace and contentment, and he enjoyed his work. He had genuine purpose. Adam thrived in pleasure, a pleasure that was pleasing to God. And God gave Adam one rule, and that was to not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. But Adam and his wife Eve chose to compromise, and they ate the fruit that God said not to. And as a result, sin entered this world. And that was the beginning of what was called spiritual death, a breaking between the relationship with God and man. Pain, struggle, evil, was given a place in this world because now the devil had access because sin is the gateway for the devil to do his dark works. But God so loved the world that he gave us Jesus. And Jesus came. He atoned for the sin. And when he atoned for the sin, because he atoned for the sin, the relationship with God is now available to mankind. We, we concluded our message by explaining the, the, and, and affirming how important it is that we understand nothing can atone for our sins but the blood of a perfect sacrifice. So many people want to compensate a good deed for a sin. And no matter how many good deeds we do, it could never atone for our sins. If that were so, many people would have been saved without Jesus. But God knew that the only way for us to be reconciled with him so we can spend eternity with him was through the sacrifice of his perfect son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, because Jesus has shed his blood for us, that sin can be 100% removed. And how does that happen? First, we must believe. Believe that God sent his only begotten son, Jesus. Second, we must confess our sins to Jesus. Tell him we understand, we know, we believe, we see that we are sinners. Confess our sins to him. And then from that point, we embrace the words of Jesus, his teaching, his directives, his commands, that, that he can tell us how to live. That's it. That's the recap, if you will, of part one. And so Easter is so valuable to us. It's, it's the pivotal point in the relationship 
between God and man. And so we're going to talk more about what Easter has brought for us, but uh, let's begin, uh, let's spend some time uh, celebrating this blessed Easter season by singing a few hymns. Uh, first, I'd like to sing the song with you, To God Be the Glory. Yes, to God be the glory. Since we've put our faith in the Lord Jesus and believe in his atoning sacrifice for our sins, we can have this fellowship with God. Now that fellowship begins and it grows as we read God's word, look at what he says in the Bible to us, his directives, his commands, his promises, and embrace those, and also to pray. We pray according to what God has said and promised. We commit ourselves through those prayers to what God has said. And in that, we grow closer and closer to the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, this next hymn is, is called In the Garden, and it speaks of the joy we share as we have this fellowship with God. Let's sing In the Garden.
Yes, he walks with me and he talks with me. Why or how is that even possible? Because Jesus atoned or paid for my sins and he restored the relationship between God and man. What a blessing. What, what an amazing blessing Easter is. Now that's just one blessing. There is something else that I want to speak of in regard to Easter. I'd like to read for you from the Gospel of John, chapter 20. And uh, before I read that, I, I want to kind of give a overview of what was happening. Of course, we know the setting that Jesus had been crucified, he died, he was buried in a tomb, they rolled the stone over it. But after three days, this is what happened. That the, the women went down to anoint Jesus' body with spices and and uh, when they got there, actually when they were on their way, they were asking one another, who's gonna roll away the stone for us? But when they got to the tomb, the stone was rolled away. They were amazed and they ran back and they told the disciples and Peter and John ran to the tomb. They went inside, they saw it was emptied. They were amazed. They didn't understand that uh, what Jesus had said had actually taken place. They were just amazed by the events of what was going on. So let's pick up the story in John chapter 20. John chapter 20, verses 10 through 18. It says here, Then the disciples went back to their homes, but Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white sitting where Jesus' body had been, one on the head, at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize it was Jesus. Woman, he asked, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. And Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet returned to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am returning to my father and your father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news. I have seen the Lord. And she told them he had said these things to her. Brothers and sisters, Jesus is risen from the grave. Jesus has triumphed over one of the most fearful and powerful issues that we deal with, death. This too is why we can walk with him and talk with him. What a blessing. We serve a living, loving, powerful Savior. Friends, we see that in the midst of what seemed to be absolutely impossible, an absolutely po impossible situation, Jesus is arrested, he's interrogated, he's falsely accused, he's sentenced to execution on a cross, he's dead, he's buried, it's all over. No, it's not all over. Jesus Christ is Lord of all. Our Lord Jesus is capable of fulfilling everything he promised regardless of the circumstances, regardless of what man does, regardless of science and nature, even death itself cannot overpower our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Sing with me, friends, a hymn. I know that my Redeemer lives. Let's sing that together.
Yes, my Redeemer lives. Is he your Redeemer? Oh, we need to trust in him and surrender all that we are to him. Now friends, there's something very important hidden in this portion of scripture that I, I want to share because Mary stood outside of the tomb and was crying. The angels asked her, why are you crying? And she answered in verse 13, she said, They have taken my Lord away, and I don't know where they have put him. If that was true, Mary had a good reason to be crying. But was it true? Her perspective certainly proved that it was true. There's another important principle here. Let's look at verse 14. At this she turned and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. Listen, friends, Jesus was right there in the midst of her hurt, her sorrow, her pain, her struggle. He was right there present to her. Look close at what's happening in Mary's life. She's believing something that was not true. She's believing what she could see with her eyes. She's believing nature and circumstances. This is true for the disciples as well. They were bewildered. Some of them, really all of them were afraid. They were hiding. They thought maybe they were next to be crucified. It's amazing. Jesus told his disciples I count in scripture at least five times, perhaps even more, that he was going to go to Jerusalem, he was going to be mistreated, he was going to be interrogated, they were going to crucify him, and after three days, he was going to rise from the dead. How could they miss it? They didn't understand it. Some like Thomas, even after it happened, and even after the disciples said, we saw the Lord, Thomas didn't even believe. He said, unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Isn't it good that even then, Jesus was so gracious to allow Thomas an opportunity to see that he might put his trust in Jesus. But he did say this, you believe because you have seen. Blessed are those who have not seen, yet believe. So friends, there are many things that we encounter in this life that suggest that God, uh, that what God said is not true. There's so many things that we face that, that just hide his face. It clouds the words of Jesus. But we must understand 
Having faith is so important to us that God often does things to build and to test and to strengthen our faith. I want to share a scripture with you in uh, 1 Peter. Um, Jesus, our, our Peter, who experienced this event that, you know, of course, Mary Magdalene has um, been part of too. But it, Jesus, our Peter writes this. Though for a little while you may have to suffer grief in all kinds of trials, these have come so that your faith, which is of greater worth than gold, may be proved genuine and may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. You see, our faith is more precious to God and it should be to us than even gold, more precious than any commodity in this world. Now, I'm not saying that Jesus' death and resurrection was for the testing of our faith. Although our faith is tested, or the faith of his disciples at that time was certainly testing. I am saying this, that so many situations and concepts and philosophies we encounter in this world test our faith. And it's a good thing because when our faith is tested, it can be strengthened and it can be made certain. I want to sing, if you would, another hymn with you. It's called, My Hope is Built on Nothing Less. Some of us know it as the solid rock. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. Other ground is sinking sand. His oath, his covenant, his blood's support be in the whelming flood. When all around my soul gives way, he then is all my hope and stay. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. Friends, this needs to be our declaration. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. This needs to be our decoration, no matter what happens, no matter what the trials, no matter what the storms, no matter what the troubles. We need to believe enough to hold on to Jesus' words, his promises, his directives, his commands. And if we do, we will see the glory of God in our lives. We will see the intervention of Jesus in so many ways in our lives. We must realize that that though Jesus atoned for our sins, sin still has a place in this world. God gives people absolute freedom to decide what they will live like and be like. We have free choice. And because we have free choice, bad things are still going to happen in this world because not everyone has put their hope and faith and life into the hands of God. They've chosen to live their own ways. And as a result, there's greed, there's immorality, there's wickedness, there's a lot of evil. And so we still have so many bad things that are taking place around us. But those who belong to Jesus, who have this promise, let me share this promise, a promise from, from God. It comes from Romans chapter eight. And we know that God works all things together for the good of those who love him.
Friends, look at what this verse said, that all things work together. The word together is very important because in the midst of bad things happening, in the midst of things that go on in this world that we don't like, that are evil or terrible even, the troubles, God works in that. When we call upon him, he works in that together with that situation and he turns that situation around so that it works for our good. Always remember that while the worst thing that the devil could ever do using evil men to do the most evil thing to the most righteous man that ever walked on this earth. While they were doing that, crucifying Jesus, God was behind the scenes in the midst of all that hopelessness and he was doing the greatest thing that ever happened in this world. He was bringing our atonement, our salvation. He was redeeming us and making it possible for us to re-enter into an eternal relationship with him. What a glorious thing that was happening in the darkest moment. And that's what God wants to do in our lives. That's why he says all things, or God works all things together for the good of those who love him. That in the midst of the most dark moments of your life, in the midst of the most evil things that go on in this world, if we commit our lives to God, if we give everything we are to Him, asking Him, which way do you want me to go? How do you want me to live through this event? What do you want me to become in the midst of it? If we do that, God will work together with that thing and cause it to become something greater than you can ever imagine. God is good and God is more powerful than evil. Jesus said, I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. We don't experience that fullness of life until we experience the intervention of God in the midst of our challenges. Friends, Jesus loves you and he understands how hurtful and lonely and fearful these trials can become. Remember what he prayed when he was on the cross? He prayed, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Jesus knew, he experienced what we experienced. He, he is not, he's not a God up in heaven sitting on a great throne, just making judgments against people. Jesus came to this earth and he experienced every temptation and trial that you and I experience, but was without sin, without compromise. He trusted God. Well, here's what happened. He prays, my God, why have you forsaken me? But that was not the only prayer he prayed. While he was still in agony on that cross, while it perhaps made no logical sense, it certainly did not make sense to the disciples. He cried out to the Father, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. You see, complete surrender to his Father's faithfulness. And this is why Jesus can give us the directive in John chapter 16. This is such an amazing verse. In John 16, 33, Jesus says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. So Mary's tears, our fears, the world's panics need to be brought to Jesus in prayer and under the light of his words. Because Jesus said this, another verse, Jesus said this, If you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. So friends, Easter is a day to remember a gift that we've been given 
that is ours every day. Yes, Easter is a holiday, one Sunday a month, a year, but it's ours every day. And we will do well to thank God every day for his gift of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. Friends, God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. I have written out a prayer that I'm going to put up on the screen here. Let me read this for you. I want you to think about the prayer. And after reading this prayer, if you think it's a good prayer, let's all pray it together. Okay? Our Father in heaven, thank you that you love all people so much that you sent Jesus to make a way for us to be united with you. Lord Jesus, I thank you that you were completely faithful in obeying the Father in all his ways, even to the point of death on the cross. I know that you are Lord of all, Jesus, even over death. I commit my life into your hands, Lord, because I trust that you love me and that you are faithful to keep your word. Good Shepherd Jesus, grant me the grace to know your will and your ways that I may follow close to you all the days of my life, even forevermore. Amen. Friends, before we pray this prayer, do you know there's something in the Bible, in the book of Romans, chapter 10, that goes so well with this whole message today. It says here in chapter 10, verse 9, If you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you confess and are saved. As the scripture says, anyone who trusts in him will never be put to shame. For there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. The same Lord is Lord of all and richly blesses all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. So friends, with that in mind, let us pray this prayer on the screen. Our Father in heaven, Thank you that you love all people so much that you sent Jesus to make a way for us to be united with you. Lord Jesus, thank you that you were completely faithful in obeying the Father in all his ways, even to the point of death on the cross. I know that you are Lord of all, Jesus, even over death. I commit my life into your hands, Lord, because I trust that you love me and that you are faithful to keep your word. Good Shepherd Jesus, grant me the grace to know your will and your ways that I may follow close to you all the days of my life, even forevermore. Amen. Amen? Yes, truly. Well, friends, our time is up. We must conclude this message. But before we go, I'd like to pray a blessing over you. It comes from the book of Romans, chapter 15. Paul, the apostle, writes, And I prayed over you. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Friends, have a great Easter today and every day of this year. 
until we see each other again, until, until we meet again. May God bless you. Go in peace and remember God is love. Standing on the promises of Christ my King Through eternal ages let His praises ring Glory in the highest I will shout and sing Standing on the promises of God Standing on the promises of God Standing on the promises of God my Savior The promises that cannot fail when the howling storms of doubt and fear assail by the living word of god i shall prevail standing on the promises of god standing on the promises standing on the promises of god my savior standing promises I cannot fall, listening every moment to the Spirit's call, resting in my Savior as my all in all, standing on the promises of God, standing, standing, standing on the promises 